is Brian Koberger? What do we know about the suspect in the University of Idaho homicides? A little-known graduate student was arrested Friday on a fugitive from justice warrant in connection with the fatal stabbings of four University of Idaho students Ethan, Zanna, Maddie and Kaylee on November 13, 2022, in a house near campus. And with that, let's get into it. Who is Brian C? Koberger. Here's what we know. Born in November 1994, from Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. Graduated with an Associate of Arts degree in Psychology in 2018 from Northampton Community College in Albrightsville, Pa he then attended DeSales University in Allentown, Pennsylvania, where he received a bachelor's degree in 2020. Brian was a part-time, casual security officer for the Pleasant Valley School District in Monroe County in November 2018, Brian assisted a high school student having a medical emergency by grabbing an AED. He was replaced by a full-time security officer in August 2021. Brian stayed at DeSales and earned a Master of Arts degree in Criminal Justice in May 2020, moved to Pullman, Washington to start his Ph.D. Brian Koberger completed his first semester as a Ph.D. student in WSU's criminal justice program earlier this month. In Pullman, Washington, he had no criminal history, aside from an August 2022 infraction for failing to wear a seat belt in Lata County, which includes Moscow, which shows he was in Moscow back in August. Former friends said about Brian was eerie in my opinion. Koberger's high school years were marked by a drastic weight loss, as well as cruel bullying, and a deep interest in police movies and criminology. Meanwhile, his parents battled financial issues, filing for bankruptcy the year Koberger was born, and again, when he was 14. On the second occasion, they surrendered their house and car after facing $260,173 in debts and having just $512 in the bank, records show. Nick McLaughlin, 26, who was friends with Koberger in high school and vocational school, described Koberger as down-to-earth and overweight when they graduated junior year. But at the start of senior year, Koberger was thinner than a rail and turned aggressive. He'd also picked up a new hobby, taking boxing classes. He always wanted to fight somebody, he was bullying people. We started cutting him off from our friend group because he was 100% a different person, McLaughlin said, adding that he had no idea what might have contributed to the change that summer. McLaughlin said he and Koberger would spend half the school day at Pleasant Valley High before heading to Monroe County's vocational school, where they took classes related to heating and air conditioning work. He said Koberger also took criminal justice courses to potentially become a cop. McLaughlin said the friendship ended when Koberger began putting moves on his girlfriend. He was, like, reaching out to her, saying, I can get us a bottle and we hang out tonight. Another high school friend, Thomas Arntz, recalled Koberger as a bully who would point out his friend's flaws and insecurities to distract from his own struggles with his weight. He did that to me all the time. He would go after my intelligence. He would basically insinuate that I'm kind of slow-witted and that I'm forgetful and I lack the intelligence to be his friend. Very interesting, as we will discuss in more detail his former friend's perspective on Brian. In Washington State University's fall course catalog, Koberger also is listed as an assistant instructor for three undergraduate criminal justice courses led by Professor John Snyder, the department's criminal justice club advisor, and global director. The three courses finished on December 9, 2022. How can one murder four people in their beds and head back to school to finish the semester? A psychopath is what I am thinking a former U of I sorority member who used to live in the King Road neighborhood, and who agreed to speak on the condition of anonymity, said Koberger was not known to several friends of the victims. Never seen him or heard of him before. No one I know knows him. Aunt said he cut off his friendship with Koberger because of the incessant bullying. He said Koberger's father, a maintenance worker, and mother, a substitute teacher, were genuinely kind people. Brian Koberger will be represented by a public defender and is being held without bail in Pennsylvania, Thompson said. He will be under the same order once he returns to Idaho, will waive his extradition to Later County, Idaho, a move that will accelerate the process of return to the community where the crimes were committed.
Koberger's public defender in Monroe County, Pennsylvania, where he was arrested by authorities Friday, made the announcement in a press release on Saturday afternoon. Mr. Koberger intends to waive his extradition hearing to expedite his transport to Idaho. Attorney Jason Allen Labar, the chief public defender for Monroe County and Koberger's counsel for the extradition hearing, said, Mr. Koberger has been accused of very serious crimes, the statement continued, but the American justice system cloaks him in a veil of innocence. He should be presumed innocent until proven otherwise, not tried in the court of public opinion. One should not pass judgment about the facts of the case unless and until a fair trial in court at which time all sides may be heard and inferences challenged. Mr. Koberger is eager to be exonerated of these charges and looks forward to resolving these matters as promptly as possible, Labar added. Koberger's extradition hearing had been scheduled for Tuesday afternoon he said a probable cause affidavit for Brian Koberger will remain sealed until he appears in an Idaho court. Meanwhile, his parents battled financial issues, filing for bankruptcy the year Brian Koberger was born, and again when he was 14. On the second occasion, they surrendered their house and car after facing $260,173 in debts and having just $512 in the bank, records show. So a contradiction to the rumors his parents are well off. Seven months ago, a person with the name Brian Koberger took part in a research project that required him to reach out directly to people who had been arrested. At the time, the person identified himself as a student investigator at DeSales University and was using a school-issued email address, about five months before the murder. Do you think this was premeditated? I definitely do. Please leave a comment below. And with that, it's a wrap. My thoughts and prayers go out the Ethan, Jana, Maddie and Kaylee's families.